This video is sponsored by Sudal. Welcome to this week's video. I have done some epic amateur construction. I'm after making something. If I do say so myself, I think it's deadly. In this video, you will expect to find me turning some IKEA CD units into a built-in for a new house for my teacups. So into collectibles and you have trinkets that you want to display. Teacup World 2.0 has happened. Let's get straight into the video. Oh, I want to give this nook a makeover. Just a little refresh. I am going to make a cabinet from Ikea CD racks and I'm gonna put doors on them. So the teacup wall will be teacup wall 2.0. I'm also going to be warming up the color as well. I'm going to get rid of the pink on the wall and I'm gonna paint the cabinet in a nice beigey tone. I hope, <laughs> I hope it's gonna turn out how it is in my head and I'm gonna try and make the cabinet look like it's built in so I'm gonna do some trim on the bottom some trim on the top I need to see how high it's gonna go um, I may have to get the tools out to do a little bit of rejigging what you think Blondie so that is the before that is the plan I'm going to the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take all of these teacups off to see some are missing and that's because I use them for teacup projects and I never put them back so I'm going to take this wall off very carefully store the teacups and then I might I'm gonna need to shimmy this over while I paint and refresh this corner first product from Sudal that I'm going to be using is Acri Rub, which is a decorator's caulk. I used it to fill the gaps because the old holes from the previous screws were not actually too wide. So I used this to fill and the great thing about it is you can paint over it within an hour. I'm using this nifty tool to take the tip off the tube, which is very handy if you have struggled before with tubes. And I also trimmed the applicator tip at an angle. Before using the product, I just used a paintbrush to brush out any dust and I wiped it down to make sure I was applying on a clean surface. I applied a small bead of filler and then I used a smoothing tool to smooth it out, but don't worry if it's not perfect. I allowed it to dry and then I sanded back any imperfection. So I've almost finished patching and it says that the acri rub is dry. Sorry, it says that it's paintable within an hour. So I'm gonna just leave it do its thing. When I come back, I use some sandpaper just to blend it into the wall. I'll have a little hoover. And while I'm waiting for that to set, I'm going to assemble the CD rack. Wish me luck because I hope I don't get the Ikea rage. <laughs> also, I think I'm gonna reuse these in my greenhouse because they're the perfect depth. They're not too deep. And like, I think I could get, hang on, sorry. I think I could get small little either mini seed trays um, or little pots to stick on. So I think I'm gonna reuse these because I can cut them in half or I can like resize them because I think they'll be long enough to go across one panel and yeah I have an idea to reuse these 
if you want to save some money with the ikea cd units do have a look and see if you can get some of them second hand especially if you're going to be painting them anyway you can just give them a clean and paint them also check out the bargain section of ikea because you might be able to pick up some x display ones as well and that can keep the cost of the project down i've also noticed whilst i'm editing this video that i think i've filmed most of the diy in my slippers which is not very practical so don't copy me try to put some proper shoes on and not slippers when you're doing some diy so before the sun starts to set i don't know if you can see the lighting is changing that winter lighting i wanted to just show you <laughs> the vision <laughs> so there is the four ikea cd racks now the plinths are not inside them but in a second i'll grab a teacup and because they fit perfect with a teacup but this door so the ikea cd unit is called Nedby. <laughs> oh, you know how I pronounce those Ikea names. And then this door, I actually can't remember off the top of my head, but I'll put it on the screen. This door will go over two of these. So there will be two doors and it'll open out like that, in theory, I hope. <laughs> and these little things here are the shelves for inside, but I haven't put them in. And then I have these are the little bits for sticking into the hole so that you can stick the shelf in. So I just have them in a little teacup. So the plan is to raise it up a little bit because if you can see here, it does have little bits for the skirting board, but it's not sitting flush. So I'm gonna have to figure out a way just to slightly raise it. And then I'm going to put, so there is a big, well, it goes to the width, or sorry, the height of the door. I am going to put some trim on the top to make it look built in, but ideally something built in would go to the top, like of the ceiling. But I'll still put trim on it to make it look like a cabinet and make it look a little bit more polished. Also, once I get the height um, how I want it, it has to be fixed to the wall and it comes with these brackets. So these brackets come with it and see these little pins? These pins, there is holes on the top of each of these and you can slot the pin in and it keeps them together but I think I'm going to use a bit of adhesive and clamp them together just to get a nice perfect join and I can fill in the gap as well so I just wanted to give you a little progress update that is my plan yeah so once I get the height perfect once I get them fixed to the wall I'm going to paint but I need to paint the wall first so you know what I need to do? I need to make a to-do list <laughs> and then I will know what I'm doing. So wall, paint, fix it to the wall, then prime and paint this because it's Ikea furniture. And before I go, let me show you a little teacup inside. So there it is. I reckon I'll be able to fit way more teacups in this. You know what I'm saying? So that's it as like a teacup set but here's a little look with the saucer sitting on a stand so there's how it looks so i reckon i should be able to it depends how many of shelves come for each one you could probably make some make some shelves as well so I'll definitely get a lot of teacups in there and it's gonna look much nicer than what it was. And also because there's gonna be a glass door on it, it's going to be safer and less dusty. So we are evolving Teacup Wall 2.0 and also this door. Um, I do have, I'm after taking this springy thing off the wall and I reckon I'm going to put, oh sorry, I wasn't in focus. I reckon I'm gonna put this springy thing on the corner so that it'll just bounce off that springy thing and I'll have a gap. Otherwise it hits it, but not, not too bad. That's it there without the spring. So if I put the spring on the bottom corner, it'll help it from knocking when Blondie comes in at night. So that's 
the vision. I hope you can see it too. So the color I'm using for the walls and the cabinet as well is Farrow and Ball's Dimity. I think I'm saying that right. And it's a lovely mushroomy, creamy color, but I like that it's not too yellow toned. If you can see it here. So this is Dimity, that's Archive. 227 I think. That is a vert de terre. I was thinking maybe green could be fun for this little nook, but I decided I want something just a bit lighter and warmer. I used a small paintbrush to cut into the edges before I rolled it with a small roller. I'm kind of sad to see the pink go. The old pink was Calamine by Farrow and Ball. But the new color that I'm using still has some warmth to it and there is a slight hint of pink. Farrow and Ball paint is kind of spendy. No, I'm not gonna lie. If I was to do the whole room, I think I would be getting a cheaper alternative. So I know in my local painter and decorator shop, they will make up the color of Farrow and Ball Dimity, let's say for example, but it will be in a cheaper paint brand. Now sometimes the color isn't always exact because you're using like a different paint brand, but it is an option. I just thought I'd share that for anyone who didn't know that some paint shops will do that. Nice and beige. <laughs> I am loving this color, but it's hard to pick up the color on camera. It is basically warmy mushroom beige. <laughs> but I'm hoping I'm gonna slot this cabinet. I'm not gonna paint this cabinet. This is in, I think this is Calamine by Fire and Ball. And you might see the color pop a bit against it. And then I have a nice bare wall ready for this to happen but I just need to wait for my door to dry so I can give it a second coat of paint but it is that mushroomy warm color and the lighting is really bad today I don't know if you can see it's quite a gray day today so the lighting is really dark in this room but the color is giving me a bit of warmth but I'll get a shot of this nook when the sun comes here in the morning because that's when the lighting in this corner is at its best. That is the colour. I am quite happy with it. Next step is I'm going to mount the cabinet to the wall and before I paint it because I'm thinking I'm actually only going to have to paint two sides and the front because uh, two of them or three of them will have their centers stuck together. So there's no point in me wasting paint and painting every single one. So I'm gonna save some paint. So I'll have four of them and I'll only have to paint the edge of the first one and the last one, the base, the top, and then obviously the doors as well. It is a sunnier day today. So here's a better, more accurate look at the color. I love it. It's just a bit fresher. Like I love the pink of that cabinet and I just thought there was maybe too much pink going on. But it was lovely for the time. Now I have scrap pieces of wood because now I need to adjust. So before I go and buy a little bit of skirting for the bottom, I need to see how much I need to raise it. So I just have some scrap pieces of wood and I'm gonna stick the four I don't really know what I'm doing to be honest, but I know I need to raise it. I've got to play around how much it needs. I don't think it needs to come up much. Yeah, skirting on the bottom, but something I also need to consider is the door. So I can't have the skirting too high or the door won't open. So I'm glad I kind of had that realization before I went and just bought a bit of skirting. Also, I'll have to take a picture of my old skirting before I go to the wood shop because I need to try and match it as as close as I can but I think that's quite a generic common bit of skirting that's what I'm doing so let's see how much I need you could always measure with um you could always measure with measuring tape which I will but I'm more of a visual person I don't trust my measurements <laughs> Ok, 
okay, I've had an idea to save myself some wood. So approximately this height is the height. I know that that's not straight there, but this height. This is the perfect height to that I need. And I was like, in my head, I was like, oh, I'll just buy the, you know where you can buy pre-cut? And I was like, girl, you have a circular saw, you have a bit of scrap pine. So I'm gonna use this to try, <laughs> oh, light a candle, to try and cut strips so that I can make a little box for the base for it to sit on. So I've just had a little look and this length is perfect. I don't know if you can see, but the width of the cabinets, I have extra on the end for some other pieces, the side pieces. So I reckon I have enough in this scrap piece of wood to make a base for the bottom because a wood, wood ain't cheap nowadays. I want to use up as much of my scrap as I can. I just need to go and get a bit of skirting board because I don't have any scrap skirting board. And I'm not gonna lie, there's a few skips on the road from people getting some like, I don't know, pre-Christmas home improvements. I will look in them skips before I go, but I don't know if I'll get some skirting board. But sure, here we are. So there is this one random bit of skirting board on its own. The other ones are really expensive and they come in packs of three. It's as if God has just left this here for me. It's slightly different, but I have enough height in it and I can fit it in my car as well. So I think I'm gonna go for this. So I'm trying to make a base for all four of the CD units to sit on to raise them up. I'm just measuring out strips on this bit of pine wood. You can buy like two by fours or strips of wood and you don't have to do this, but I just wanna recycle the piece that I already have. So I'm just using my mini circular saw to cut them as straight as I could. I was very impressed with myself. Also, Santa, if you're listening, I think I need to invest in some woodworking legs so I can stop clamping random pieces of wood to garden furniture to get a straight cut. So Santa, if you're listening, I need a little table. The next item that I use from the Suda range is the timber adhesive. I applied a small piece of adhesive to the pieces of wood that I wanted to stick together and then I used some wood clamps to clamp them all together while they dried. My main thing was making sure that all of my four CD racks would stick to the wall and that they could bear the weight of the teacups that I wanted to put inside and also the weight of the door. The wall that this is getting stuck onto is a plasterboard wall so I made sure to find the stud within the wall and with the brackets that come with the IKEA CD rack I drilled these brackets into the stud and I made sure it was nice and strong so it's drilled in at the top and then all four of them are stuck together uh, by the little pins that come with them as well. And then I also added some brackets to the bottom base. Whenever you're drilling into the wall, it's always good to make sure that you're not gonna be drilling into any electrics. And if you are ever in doubt, never go above your skill set and ask for some help. I am more dishevelled as these DIYs go on, but this has been a fun challenge for myself. Now, I have to get the door on the thing, and I was like, oh no, is this gonna be hard? No, I'm putting an Ikea door on an Ikea thingy. The holes match up. I don't think this was designed to have a door because it's a CD rack. I currently have, I'll show you. I currently have the CD inserts stacked. So I can see, oh sorry, so I can see how high I need to go with the door. So what I'm gonna do is, this is kind of a two man job, but I'm the equivalent to 10 men. <laughs> so I'm going to, oh, do my brackets line up? <laughs> no, they don't. Okay, absolutely scrap what I just said about the dots lining up. And the dots do line up, but the brackets don't line up. So, see the dots here, I thought, oh nice, they match. <laughs> but 
the holes for the bracket don't line up. So I'm gonna have to drill these in. Yeah, not as easy as I thought. So I drilled two little holes, but little tip, don't drill all the way through. It'll come out the other side. So I got the bracket on and then I remembered, sorry, I marked it as well, that'll come off. Remember when I did the other Ikea door makeover video? I will link it in the description. I used um, my own screws for this. I'm now gonna try stick the door on and I'm starting with the middle one. And if this works, I'll copy the measurements from here for the top and for the bottom. And then I may have one door on. Very happy with that. You can probably tell by the lighting, it's getting dark again. This project, I've just been tipping away at it, but it's taking me forever. I'm thinking I'm gonna install the other door off camera and then tomorrow it will be trim. And I may have to trim the trim because I think I'm a centimeter on the bottom. I'll figure it out. See, when you do these DIYs, problem solving is your, yeah, you have a bit of a gap on the bottom. Not a gap, but, oh, actually. Eh. So it's gonna have loads of little, oh, <laughs> I reckon the gap. It's gonna have loads of little shelves inside, and then it will be full of teacups, and then it also needs to be painted as well. So I'm thinking tomorrow we'll do the trim and paint it, so it's going to be the same color as the wall, so nice and warm nice and warm toned and I have little gold little gold knobs to stick onto so time to do the other door so it's a little bit of a rainy one this morning so the lighting might not be perfect but today I need to do the trim and I need to paint it Real talk, I'm having a mitre mare, mitre mare. My brain, I, you could tell it to me 10 million times. My brain is, I was the sort of person that given a geometry mathematical equation would just cry into the book. I'm visual, the brain and maths and pi and 90 degrees and 40 degrees, I want to be good at it because I was a little bit like this when I started sewing. Miter corners and angles. I would love to sit with a physical person. I can watch the YouTube videos, I can, but I just need to be shown by a person in real life about getting them how to measure. So basically, we have to go with... <laughs> this is all I have left from cutting <laughs> the wrong pieces of wood a million times. May have to glue a piece on to the end because I think I cut it too short but I, I have no other pieces left. So we're gonna have to go with the smaller piece of trim for the top. If you have the mitre problem and angles, I think it's angles. It used to stress me out in maths class. So I'm currently having, I probably have some chocolate on my face. I'm having some chocolate coffee just to, yeah. But you know what? Thank God for cock. <laughs> Thank God for decorators cock. I'm gonna fill in all them holes and you won't know no different that I made a million mistakes. <laughs> Fill it, paint it, good to go. Week on a building site with a carpenter, I would be on the ball. If anyone wants to give me an owl, little carpentry apprenticeship or, you know, a little, it could be your intern, just to learn how to do these miters. But anyway. So I use my nail gun to tack in the skirting board into the base that I had created and at first I was like oh no 
this is so wonky. But then I got the cock out. I used the Acrobe Decorators Cock by Sudal to fill in all my mistakes. You'll see in my hand that I have this handy little squeegee tool, but I also like using my finger as well. There is something very satisfying about running your finger on the decorator's cock to make it smooth. The texture is kind of like frosting on a cake and you've lots of time to smooth it over and get it nice and smooth and as perfect as you want and the great thing about this is it's paintable so once it's past an hour you can paint over this And I just say thank God for that decorator's cock and filler because it has hidden all of my mistakes. And I will show you the bottom piece I had caught a little bit wonky because I had to trim it and there was a little gap and the filler has filled it and all is good. And then the side as well, I had a mistake and I filled it, so that's good. You know what, A for effort, this is not perfection because trim is not my strength, but you know what? I think it looks okay. I also filled in the sides just so they'd be a bit more flush and make it look, I don't know, a little bit more professional. Also, see the top? That is the tiny piece of trim. It's not stuck on, it's just resting. Yeah, it definitely needs trim to finish it off. I don't have enough of the bottom piece because of all my cutting mistakes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick the this trim on top and then it is time to paint a piece. But can I just say, I'm very impressed for getting the doors on almost <laughs> the same height. Now, because my video is already 10 million years long and you've already seen me paint some Ikea furniture, but just a quick recap before I paint this, I'm gonna give it a clean with some sugar soap because my mucky paws and everything has been on it. Then I'm gonna use some sandpaper to lightly key it because Ikea furniture, as you can see, it's super smooth. So we want a little bit of keying to get the paint to stick to it. So clean, key, then I'm gonna dust off any of the dust and then I'm going to give it a coat of primer um color trends prime 2 I think I have some left in my stash but you just need to use a primer specifically designed for difficult surfaces just to give it a better adhesion and then I'm going to pop on I have some say eggshell indemnity which will be the same color as this it does look nice and white but another thing I was thinking the pink cabinet looks nice against that color and this could be nice painted in pink, but I don't have that paint and I don't want to buy any more paint. So hopefully this will all be painted. I'll have stuck on my gold knobs and we can start putting the teacups in it, which is the fun part, which is what you're all waiting for. So that's the plan. The last item that I'm using in today's video from the Sudal range is the glass and mirror cleaner. And I do have a couple of paint splotches on the glass and this was great at scrubbing them off and it left the glass squeaky clean. Ugh. 
I don't want to get too excited, but once I clean up the mess, I think I'm finished. Now, I did, not that I threw my teacups in, but I did just put everything in. It could definitely be colour coordinated, displayed, like a bit more nicer, but I was just excited to get them all in. And the little squares are absolutely perfect. So if you are a collector of, it doesn't even have to be teacups. If you collect things like, I don't know, train sets or I don't actually let me know if you collect random things too I love trinkets love 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 trinkets and every trinket has a little story this I trinket I got in Sintra in Portugal has a little handmade there was like a little handmade pottery shop and there was loads of little bits so I tried to collect something when I travel oh geez nearly broke it <laughs> okay I'm gonna put it back <laughs> This I got in Lisbon actually, look I've gone off on a tangent, I got that in Lisbon at a market, there was like a little thrift market and everything was like a pound or a euro, 50p, 2 euro and it's actually Portuguese China as well, Porcelanas SPB Portugal, so trinkets. <laughs> And before I go off on a history of the trinkets, we will close the door. <laughs> um, what else did I want to see as well? Ah, the teacup holders. See these. I will try and find the link. I had bought them when I originally did teacup wall, the original, the OG. This is 2.0. These are absolutely great for displaying your teacups. And I don't think they're too expensive. But they're well worth it if you're trying to display and you want them to stand up. So I have coffee because you know I'm running low. This project, not gonna lie, has run, run on longer than most kind of DIY projects I do, but I definitely learnt loads. And I think my construction skills have gotten a little bit better. I'm gonna clean up and do the final cleaning of the cabinet and I'll give the final reveal. that's the end result I do want to point out one mistake because I'm not afraid to share them you may notice one knob is higher than the other that's what she said common issue I need to raise this I'd say like um, a couple of millimeters and what I have to do is I just have to drill the whole door out but I need to drill in new holes and I did try to do it yesterday and I was like do you know what I need someone to hold the door for me so I can get it perfect or else I'm gonna have loads of holes <laughs> from me trying to drill the bracket in so I do have I'm slightly off slightly off like a fingertip amount but the knobs don't lie they they show when the knobs weren't on, you couldn't tell, but then when I put them on, you can tell. But I'm gonna wait to fix it until I have someone who'll hold the door for me and then I can screw it in. And yeah, perfectly aligned knobs. Done is better than perfect. Isn't that the saying, done is better than perfect? <laughs> I also wanna say a massive thank you to this week's sponsor, which is Sudal. If there is one thing from the range, if you're tempted to try, the decorator's cock. It doesn't crack like other ones. That's one thing I've noticed. So all of my caulking lines and everything, sometimes with other fillers, they can crack. It hasn't cracked for this, which is great because I have used filler on other projects. Downstairs, I had the beadboard and I noticed some of the caulk kind of, you got that like aged patina look, it cracked on me. So it also hides all of your mistakes. And if there's one other thing I'd like you to take from this video is to just try. Obviously, I always say kind of 
craft and make within your skill set but I think there's a nice stretch zone. Don't start building something if you've never picked up a drill but maybe start with smaller projects. I do have a birdhouse that's a fun little beginner woodwork project and then with creativity it just kind of grows arms and legs and one minute you're like I'm gonna build something so I hope I've given you a little bit of inspiration or motivation to just simply try and done is better than perfect and don't worry if you have wonky edges and don't worry if your knobs don't match it's okay <laughs> we can try again everything can be fixed and we can always ask people for help and practice is where we learn we can watch all of the YouTube videos but actually when we actually go to physically do it ourselves that is when we learn. That is me for this week's video. If you enjoy this video and you're not yet subscribed, please do check out my other videos. Welcome to the community from our regular viewers. I think this deserves a big cheeky thumbs up. I do wanna do something. I think I'm gonna use this cabinet as well for practical storage. Right now there's like a clutter in it. There's some books, but I did have an idea that I might use fabric to cover the glass and I might use it as linen storage so bed linen and towels because that's something I notice I don't have a lot of up here so I think I might do something more practical and I do have a shelf free in the living room where I can put the books and stuff so I do think I might do something in this nook just to make it a bit more practical things can look pretty but are they practical practical and pretty okay on that note I will see you in the next video